Hello everyone! Uh, since uh, a lot of you were sad uh, I didn't uh, put any photo challenges in my uh, couple of previous videos, uh, I did prepare a, a quite a difficult one uh, for this video. And I will not always have a photo challenge. For example, now I'm holding the Carlsen Anand the World Champs Championship Series. Uh, I don't think I will be doing any photo challenges there, but I will always try uh, to show at least uh, an interesting photo or two. Uh, but since this is... Uh, well, it might, it might turn out into a mini series, but not, not, uh, it's not uh, you know meant to be a series. So uh, here it is. Uh, best luck, best of luck to everyone. Uh, let's check it out. So uh, here is your challenge, and uh, if you need uh, a hint or two, uh, at least uh, one of these uh, uh, gentlemen uh, were world champions, but perhaps even two. So there we have it, best of luck to you all, and before uh, we start with this game, I, I recently learned uh, of a very peculiar uh, hobby uh, that Levan Arnion has. Well, I'm not really sure if I should call it a hobby, I'll just show you what I mean. Uh, so look at this photo, this is Levan Arnion, and this is, uh, well, a very, uh, not the greatest uh, Photoshop of uh, of his dog Ponchik, uh, but it's a, it's a hobby Levon Arnian has. He's the one that actually made this photo. Uh, he will use uh, he will use some historic well historic. He will use some photos that uh, seem to be important to him, and then he will edit his uh, dog Ponchik uh, onto the face of someone else. This is actually Maxim Vasiliev Lagrav, uh, and there Levon Arnian made this uh, on his smartphone. So uh, he, I don't think he posts them online, but he probably has like a, a whole lot of albums uh, that he <laughs> that he put Ponchik instead of some other people. And uh, yeah, as, as you can see, for example, here is a photo uh, from uh, Levan Arnon's wedding. Uh, there's a little Ponchik really enjoying the day, you know, being a part of everything and all. So yeah, uh, just, uh, you know, I found that really interesting, just uh, wanted to share that with you guys. So, uh, about this game and about this tournament. Uh, here are the players from this tournament. It's um, uh, uh, This is the first tournament that's a part of the Grand Chess Tour. It's uh, your next move, it's played in Leuven in Belgium. And uh, this is uh, a photo taken in front, of, in front of the playing hall where the tournament is being held. There you have it. Uh, Vishwanathan Anand, Levan Aronyan, Hikaru Nakamura. Wesley So, Anish Giri in the middle, then uh, there's Fabi, Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, Shakir Mamedyarov, uh, Sergei Karyakin, and uh, Alexander Grishuk. So, uh, the, the last year's champion of uh, Leuven tournament was Magnus Carlsen. There will be a Rapid and Blitz event, and uh, since Carlsen is not, uh, will not be joining them in this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this year's uh, Leuven event, uh, then he will not be able to defend his title. Uh, but uh, Wesley So, uh, uh, had a very nice start in in uh, day one three rounds were played so let's check out one of the games this is a game Fabiano Coruana versus Wesley so we don't have a photo uh, of them actually playing but we do have a nice close-up of Wesley from this tournament there you have it and uh, a very nice close-up of Fabi so uh, let's let's check it out uh, Wesley uh, has the black pieces and Fabi opens with e4 we have e5 knight to f3 knight c6 and bishop to b5 so the rule Lopez. Uh, a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, knight to f6, we have castles, uh, bishop to e7, d3, b5, bishop to b3, this is all standard theory of Morphe's defense, d6, we have a4, uh, bishop to d7, and c3 now. Uh, Wesley castles, bishop to c2, uh, rook to e8, and rook to e1. h6, knight b to d2, uh, b4 now, and uh, d4. Rook to b8, uh, d5 now, attacking the knight, uh, b captures on c3, and now b captures on c3. Uh, d captures on c6 is not possible due to obvious reasons. If you do this, then captures, and you cannot capture the bishop, uh, as uh, rook is captured with check, queen captures, and after queen captures d7, uh, black will be up the exchange, he will have a rook for a bishop. So after b captures on c3, b recaptures on, b on c3, uh, and now knight to a5, uh, pressuring uh, b3, c4, and also preparing uh, to, to, to push forward the c-pawn. Uh, bishop to a3, we have c6, c4 now, queen to c7, Developing the queen, connecting rooks, bishop to d3, uh, knight back to b7, and knight to b3 now. And a5. Uh, bishop to c1. Uh, we have bishop to g4, and now bishop to e3, remaneuvering from a3 to e3. Uh, knight to e7, and here uh, Wesley is preparing a very nice maneuver, that is knight to c5. 
h3, bishop captures, queen captures, and now comes knight b to c5 first. Uh, Wesley will double his pawns, but uh, only temporarily, and uh, as you will see, he will get uh, great compensation for it. Uh, we have captures, 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 d captures on c5, uh, and now bishop to f1. Uh, Wesley now controls the b file, and it's very hard to oppose him. If you play something like rook e to b1, then rook to b4 is coming. Rook to b4 is a move that will be played eventually, regardless of what white plays. It's a you know free doubling up of the rooks, or black will, or or white will capture, and black will very nicely uh, undouble and have uh, a nice connected a and b pawn. Uh, so after d captures on c5, first bishop to f1, and now rook does come to b4. Uh, Fabi decided not to challenge Wesley's control of the b file, rook to d1, and now rook e to b8, of course doubling up on the b file. Uh, g3, c captures on d5, now getting rid of his weak doubled pawn, uh, e captures on d5, and bishop to d6. Now, as you can see, uh, uh, Fabi has a light square bishop, Wesley has a dark square bishop, and usually when you have a, a light square against a dark square bishop and there are still queens and rooks on the board, uh, what you want to do is you want to attack your opponent, because if uh, if black is on the attack and he, he he's using his dark square bishop for attacks, uh, then uh, white will not be able to oppose this bishop with his light square bishop so it will be like uh, one of the players the one who's attacking uh, is attacking being a piece up something you know uh, maybe worth remembering uh, but uh, as uh, for now this bishop is uh, currently currently a pawn uh, so e4 will have to be played at some point and it it will be it will be seen if uh, fabi can activate his light square bishop so h4 uh, queen to d7, uh, Wesley would uh, very much enjoy pushing f5, so Fabi doesn't allow it, bishop to d3, g6, again Wesley wants to push f5, and Fabi uh, once again doesn't allow it, g4. So this does stop f5, but uh, this is uh, a lot of uh, open space in front of the white king. Uh, queen to e7, uh, we have h5 now, and queen to g5. Uh, h captures on g6, f captures on g6, and now queen to g2. It's not all that easy to untangle for white here, as uh, the, the g2 pawn has to be defended. Uh, the queen isn't really useful on f3. This rook can easily come to f8. The other rook can come to b2. Uh, you do want to move the queen, so you can maybe push the f pawn to further protect the g4 pawn, but it's not at all simple. Uh, Fabi plays queen to g2. We have rook to f8 now, uh, rook to e1, and uh, now comes rook to b3, attacking the bishop. Uh, rook to e3. Now defending the bishop, and also the rook will uh, come in very handy in defending the king side. Uh, rook to f4. Now, <clears throat> with ideas of playing rook captures on g4. Uh, bishop to f5 now. Uh, kind of se seemingly uh, a piece sac sacrifice, but not really, as this uh, did open up uh, the attack from white rook to the black rook. And uh, now you could capture, for example, rook captures on e3, and after f captures, simply rook captures on c4. You could grab pawn, and you know th this bishop has to move okay bishop e6 check but white doesn't really have anything here uh, but instead after this bishop to f5 uh, rook to b2 is played wesley simply keeps on the tension uh, bishop to e6 check king to g7 and now comes rook to f1 you do have to protect uh, the f pawn somehow you, either rook to f3 or rook to f1 uh, what Fabi played uh, is is uh, is a, a, an okay move. So rook to f1, and now rook captures on c4. There was no way to deal with both threats. So here Wesley wins uh, a clean pawn. Uh, we have queen to g3. Uh, of course, you can't allow uh, this pawn to be captured. So queen to g3, rook b to b4. Now uh, two rooks and the queen are attacking this pawn, uh, and we have queen to h2 simply. Uh, getting the queen out of the way f3 is no longer possible because then simply queen captures rook with check uh, so queen to h2 and now rook to f4 yet again wesley keeps the pressure uh you know on uh rook captures on g4 is also possible uh but it is a rapid game you don't want to give your opponent any chances uh this comes with check and after bishop captures rook captures uh, after king moves now uh, e4 is the move now you finally open up the dark square bishop uh, you have to sacrifice it, and after queen captures, now rook to h4 check. Queen blocks, and now rook captures. King captures, and queen captures on d5. You have a queen against two rooks, uh, but with uh, being up three pawns, this would be winning for black. But Wesley doesn't want to give uh, any chances. Uh, rook to f4, and now Wesley prepares e4. Uh, king to h1. Uh, we have e4 now. Now the bishop will be eyeing the queen as, as soon as the rook moves. Uh, f3, gu further guarding the g4 pawn, but now h5. 
uh, queen h3, h captures on g4, bishop captures on g4, and now uh, there's really little white can do here. Black can either go rook b2, uh, rook b8, rook f8, pretty much any move will do. Uh, in the game, Fabi decided to go rook b8 with the threat being rook to h8, winning the queen. Uh, so uh, Fabi plays queen to g3, but now comes rook to h8 with check. King moves, and here, of course, everyone can see the move. Uh, okay, either he captures on f3, this will also be nice, this comes with check, but in the game, uh, rook captures on g4 was played, and uh, it was in this position that uh, Fabiano Caruana, uh, World Chess Championship challenger, resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, of course, uh, he just lost a piece, and uh, he will lose his queen. Uh, he cannot capture the bishop here as the queen is pinned, and of course, if you play something like f captures on g4, then the bishop will capture queen, and there's really no counterplay here, simply queen captures rook, and white is getting checkmated here. So yeah, uh, after this uh, rook to g4, uh, a very nice move, uh, Fabiano resigned the game, and a very nice win for Wesley So. Uh, and uh, just so we don't forget, here are the standings after day one. So after three games were played, uh, Wesley So is currently in first place with two and a half out of three points, and then followed uh, by Karkin and Arunon with two points, with one and a half points, Nakamura, Grishuk, Vashir Lagrav, and Anish Giri, uh, and uh, Mamed Yarov. And in last place with only half out of three points are Vishwanathan Anand and Fabiano Caruana. So a lot of people are saying that if, you know, Fabiano has to definitely, <laughs> okay, this is only day one, but, you know, as people like to talk, they say that uh, uh, he should definitely improve his game, especially a rapid and blitz game, uh, because if, uh, you know, he, he, he will not be able to defeat Magnus in November in classical time format or, you know, after all of the games are played, if it's going to be at Raw, uh, then they will go into rapid format and, and in the end, the blitz format. So he, uh, with this, with this uh, uh, you know, level of play, he will not uh, pose much challenge to Carlsen in, in November. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game, and those were uh, so, some nice photos. I do hope you enjoyed the, that little story about Arnon's hobby as well, and uh, best of luck in the photo challenge. Uh, I would like to thank once again Douglas Rife, uh, Kyle Pasco, Tang Rong, uh, Michael Michael, and William Fusco for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, perhaps with another nice uh, rapid game from Leuven, or we'll see if none of the games will be... Uh, very interesting. We'll just continue with our uh, Anand versus Carlson series. And if you found any game in particularly interesting, uh, you know, feel free to suggest uh, from Leuven, and I will, I will uh, definitely check it out. So yeah, thank you all, and I will see you soon.